Welcome to Create Your Own Reality, a show about hope, inspiration, and encouragement. A program that will feature guests and topics that may inspire you to think and stretch your beliefs about what is real and how you can create miracles in your life. Your hosts, Badish Lang and Pauline Nortness. Welcome. Have you ever felt overwhelmed that you just couldn't handle life on your own? Well, there are people trained to get you back on track. They're called life coaches. And our guest today is certified life coach, Laisha Canuvin. Welcome to the show, Laisha. We're so happy to have you. Thank you, Pauline. It's great to be here. And Nish. Thank you. Laisha, what is it? Um, could you explain what a life coach is? Make it clear for us. A life coach is an avenue to help a person connect with their own potential mm -hmm. that they're not quite aware of. So it gives them guidelines, it gives them strategies, as well as goals to make a forward motion that maybe they weren't avail aware that they could take. Years ago, I was inter actually interested in becoming a life coach, and I found out that um, you just can't all of a sudden become one. There's quite a bit of training involved, and also yeah. there, are different there are different coaches, too. There's spiritual coach, there's career coach. Exactly. There's, and what kind of coach, what do you give yourself a name? Life? Well, yes, I'm a life coach, uh -huh. and I help people with their personal transitions, basically women in transition. Mm -hmm. And I help them connect with their own potential. It could be regarding um, health concerns mm -hmm. and, and career issues. So I address a lot of different avenues for a woman in transition. So what kind of training did you have to become mm -hmm. a life coach? Because I just mentioned that right. I, I looked into it. And I, uh -huh. I remember, I think it may take a year or so. It was, exactly. It yeah. takes at least a year. And my particular training is with Newfield Associates. Newfield? Newfield Newfield, Associates. I'm sorry. Yeah. OK. Uh -huh. And their particular approach to life coaching is based on linguistics and cognitive sciences. OK, um, mm -hmm. just for people that don't understand, linguistics is Ling yes. language. It is language. And cognitive sciences is the ability to to be aware of your body mm -hmm. and your thinking process. Mm -hmm. So as one becomes able to observe themselves, they are able to make pivotal changes that have a long lasting effect in their life. So it's beyond strategies and it's beyond just goal setting. Right. And is life coaching sometimes is that what some people just do is strategies and this is beyond right. it. Yeah, there's strategies and there's protocols uh -huh. uh, with particular questions you ask in, in line. And uh -huh. this is this particular approach does have um, more of an in-depth look at the person's way of being, mm -hmm. their particular, uh, the way they use their language, the mm -hmm. way they are aware of their emotions and also how they have belief systems or interpretations as to their limitations. Right, we have a lot of those. Well, I know you've yeah. done a lot with neuro-linguistic programming, yeah. so yeah. maybe you have some questions on well, that. Well, I have a question about what drew you mm -hmm. to become mm -hmm. a life coach, and how long have you been one? Great question. Good question. Well, I've been a life coach since 1999, and it's interesting, I, all my life I've been a teacher at heart, and so I've always been interested in, in working with people, you know, one-on-one -on -one to help them with that mm -hmm. potential resource. And uh, for years I was involved with um, massage therapy and helping people, women that were uh, involved with uh, somatic physical abuse. Somatic, that, let's physical, clarify that. Physical, yeah. physical impact. And when of, I think of somatic, I think of, people say psychosomatic, yes. is it the same thing? Somatic, uh-huh. Somatic. Yes, it's a phys where the physical body has had a, um, an experience that it remembers. Mm -hmm. And so um, many times people with abuse have had difficulty in being touched mm -hmm. okay. and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so for many uh -huh. years I worked on that level and then I came to a point where one of my clients actually came to me and says, I've discovered something that's really inspiring to me and they were stepping into doing life coaching in this particular matter. Mm -hmm. And when I heard about it, it was like, Everything was coming together for me. Mm -hmm. I was very inspired about it, mm -hmm. and uh, because I have a, I love communicating, and I love helping another person mm -hmm. being able to access ways they can communicate mm -hmm. and connect with their own, you know, way of uh, communicating their needs, so to speak. So that ex that excited me. It's like everything came together, and for many mm -hmm. years I had done the massage work, and I was coming to an end of that. It was a perfect transition for me. So now, instead of working with my hands, I'm able to work with the language and, and the communication verbally. Mm -hmm. And so I just, uh, I've been 
very, very fulfilled with this particular approach to coaching. What would set you apart from other life coaches? Mm -hmm. I would say it's the ontological approach that my coaching training gives me. And the, yes, I'm sorry, I don't mean to stop you, but another word. Or, or another word. <laughs> the only reason I stop you and, yeah. and I, tell me if this doesn't work for you, because sometimes no, it's good. Good, mm -hmm. because I know people out there, and that was a new word for me. Uh -huh. Ontological. I found it really fascinating. Did it you? means humanity, is it? Yes, it's the study of humanity, the uh -huh. study of our humanness. What makes us expand into life, and what contra helps us contract? And it's or, yes, and contraction so it's, is. Bad. Well, it's, bad yeah, it's it death. Yeah. <laughs> well, expansion uh, is bad. life. Yeah. <laughs> and um, ontological is that a new word or is, is no? It's an old word it's actually. Old word. It's okay. been a long, around okay. a long time. But studying that way of being or our our humanity mm -hmm. helps us learn to observe ourselves more deeply. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that that particular approach is different than most life coaching approaches. So that would when you have a client come to you. Uh -huh. I would imagine that your clientele is mostly women. Yes. And when they come to you, what are you as a therapist what are, or a coach, mm -hmm. what are you looking for specifically when they sit down? Mm -hmm. Good question. What I'm looking for is that they're ready yeah. to make a shift, that they have come so far that they've tried different things and it's just not working for them. They're they're ready to try on new shoes, so to speak, take new steps, um, but they're not, they're not quite clear as to maybe what they want or what direction to take, so they're needing to brainstorm. Um, needing to be heard. They, oh, yes, and that's a big part of being a coach is to really be a, a quality listener and to give them the floor to express their experience and what's worked for them. So you're looking for them to be in a state of mind mm -hmm. where they have made a commitment. After they've met you and they trust you, then you're looking to see if they are actually making a commitment to do the work. Yes, because that means they'll be able to take the actions yeah. that will give them the new mm -hmm. experience they're yeah. looking for. Yeah. That's them. How about you? Mm -hmm. Don't you have to, how do you establish, I mean, if I came to you, it's, right. it's hard to even go to your best friend sometimes with your problems, let alone a stranger. Right. So how do you get them to feel comfortable with you and to trust you? That's a good question. Well, I we always ask good questions, by the way. <laughs> I, and we always say that. <laughs> you can look at us. You don't have to worry about. <laughs> good. Just, I love that. Yeah. Well, I would say that what helps them relax is my genuine interest in their story. You know, what brought them there? What, what's missing for them? What's not working for them? So that they could tell me what, what's really going on and what, what they want to accomplish. So it's, it's first listening. And it's second of all, it's really using mm -hmm. my intuition to feel like I can ask questions mm -hmm. that bring them out so that they can feel like they can be seen mm -hmm. and validated for the work they have done. Can you give us an example, like give us a person that came to you with mm -hmm. a specific problem if you can, you don't have to use names, right? and uh, what you might have said to that person so mm -hmm. people know mm -hmm. what they might expect. When mm -hmm. That's a good it. question. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. I'll, let's say, oh, there's so many. Mm -hmm. I would start, let's say Kathy. Mm -hmm. Kathy came to me um, new in the community, knew no one. Uh, really being focused on on her career all her life, but but feeling not connected with the community. Also, at the same time, um, she was looking for work, and she was doing and she was very much in her head. And what I was noticing so that means not in touch with the feelings, right? She, and she was not in touch with her emotions or what mm -hmm. they were guiding her to do or inspirations they might have been giving her. And so our work was to talk about how safe she might feel in allowing herself to feel the feelings mm -hmm. and to be able to learn mm -hmm. to trust that there was some good information right there waiting to take her to the next step if she would relax into that. And so then what happened as she worked with me for a period of time, she ended up um, contracting cancer. Mm 